Welcome to In the Deep. I'm your host, Katherine Ingram. The following is excerpted from a session of Dharma Dialogues held in Lennox Head, Australia in September 2017. It's called Windswept Thoughts. Good afternoon and welcome. Fabulous wind, huh? Some people don't like wind. I happen to be someone who loves the wind. And as I was sitting here, I was sort of feeling into a kind of just allowing the awareness to consider that thought is basically like being swept off by wind. If you imagine an internal wind that is just constantly sweeping the thoughts. Now, sometimes one fixates, of course. One becomes very, very interested and intrigued and perhaps horrified by certain clusters of thoughts. But they too are being swept Each and every one of them disappears as soon as they arise. More can come that are of a similar nature. But in fact, every single thought you've ever had has disappeared as soon as it arose. So then one can sit in the spaciousness through which the wind of thought is blowing. And just enjoy, just enjoy the breeze. Now granted, there are times that are troubling. There are times when It's just simply very, very hard to be in a condition of enjoyment in that spaciousness. And we allow for those times. We allow for the hard times, certainly. Don't deny those or try to transcend them or just shoo them away. But often, often in life, we're we're locked into... Uh, a trance of thought or a subject that is disturbing or causing a kind of sleepiness or any number of ways in which we're not experiencing the brightness of being. And this part is unnecessary. <laughs> so as we're sitting here in the luxury of this reminding experience of wind just feel into how this sense that nothing was ever sticking nothing ever stuck that your awareness has remained fresh and clear and bright throughout everything. The sounds of the birds, the sounds of the wind, the rustle of the trees, your thoughts, all of it just phenomena passing through. The brightness of your own awareness. Become accustomed to the experience of yourself as this brightness of awareness. Let yourself feel that as your primary resting point. Mm-hmm. 
Well, it, it occurs to me as you're speaking about this resting and aliveness and um, just how much of that or <clears throat> uh, I do love to do that, to be that, to be this. And I can't even really say what this is or and there doesn't seem to be any limit or and I know there's a, a certain length of lifespan and uh, <laughs> usually things are measured and in time and um, in relating to people there are a lot of um, what about this, what about that, Yeah. you know, the world, the environment, the planet, the humans, the creatures and all of these things come in and are thought about and considered and some actions are happening about it and and yet what I really love is what you're speaking about, the... <laughs> The thisness of it. The thisness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, I know. That's what I love too. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting how few people um, tune into this particular frequency and they are lost in all of the things you just described. People spend, you know, I dare say almost everyone on the planet is just in a gigantic swirl of varying forms of madness. And it takes, I don't know what it takes, some kind of grace, some kind of luck, some kind of, I mean, obviously not through any, any merit. It doesn't have to do with merit that one is so lucky as to turn your attention to this distillation of simplicity of being and to find their incredible gratitude and aliveness and sweetness and connection. And that is an extraordinary rarity. Um, and how it happens is totally a mystery. But if it, if it happens to be your particular, you know, desire and yearning and love, you're very lucky. That's all I can say. Very lucky. Because it's amazing. And even Howard, among the spiritual crowd of the world, who are so still busy in a, very, you know, in, in a grandizement of some sort or in very complicated formulas of goal-oriented practices and visualizations of this and that. I mean, you know, just sort of endless knots, mental knots, you know, maybe with the impulse to come to what you've just pointed to, the impulse is there, but somehow the old habits, frankly, of ego are still involved. And I put myself in this category. I was, I was, that was how it was for me as a so-called spiritual seeker for a long, long time. And, you know, it was like I, I wanted, I wanted this me to be enhanced. I was looking for an enhanced version of me. <laughs> and I was, I turned to a spiritual path for that. Um, eventually, that project came to an end as well. Not that, not that the enhanced version of me ever came to be, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that I gave up that, I gave up that search. I gave up that project. And so, you know, how, how that happened, in my case, again, I felt very lucky. I, I had great mentors, um, you know, and I really heard their message. Um, but, yeah, the, the, what most people are up to, what most people are interested in, is all just, you know, stuff that's turning to dust. Punjaji, my teacher Punjaji, one of my most powerful mentors, um, he has this great line, very powerful line. 
Let me just think of it for a minute. The wise are attracted by the eternal, while the foolish pursue the transitory and are thus bludgeoned by time. Right? Bludgeoned by time. The wise are attracted by the eternal. Right? You know, and, and interestingly, that word, I love that word. Of course, I don't, I don't actually expect eternal life personally. I don't expect personal eternal life. But I think what we can assume is that there is something called the eternal. It's not personal, right? So as we were sitting here prior to my speaking, and I was just so deliciously listening to the wind, it occurred to me, it just sort of, you know, the, the words came through. Uh, it's the eternal wind, you know? It's like different forms of wind, perhaps in different planets and different galaxies and whatever, but that, that, that force of movement, right, that's going on in, in the universe. Um, I just sort of, just for a second, tuned into that feeling and that recognition, right? Not personal, not me continuing. Um, the wise are attracted by the eternal, while the foolish pursue the transitory and are thus bludgeoned by time. And most, most everyone is pursuing the transitory. That's what they do in the day. And at some point, time does bludgeon them. You know, it does. And to the degree one is invested in the transitory is, is the exact... Uh, degree that one will be suffering. So yes, it's very beautiful that you recognize the, the thisness is the uh, spot to hang out. As much as possible, one doesn't have to expect to be there all the time. I always emphasize, this might be your first time seeing me, is it? Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Um, um, one doesn't have to expect any kind of consistent state that is unchanging, but that you, for the most part, you're hanging out in the sweet spot, for the most part, that that becomes what you're attracted to. Right. It's about an attraction. Punjaji called it a holy yearning. <laughs> the yearning is there, here. Yeah. Uh, it's been here for a long time, and mm -hmm. it's still here, and it doesn't seem to get any less, and... Some of these things uh, come in, that you, the transitory that you're speaking about and the attention goes there and yet as soon as it goes there, it's painful and there's this urge to come back to the thing that you're describing that's eternal that, and, uh, and many teachers have pointed to that in Punjaji also. And there's more and more. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, no, that's that that yearning to come back is all that's required, all that's needed. It's all that there is to it, actually. Somehow, yeah. it's not different to the thing itself. Right. That's it, good. It, <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. The the yearning yearns. For the source of the yearning. Yes, that's good. Yeah. I'm not really sure what to do with all of that or what, how to live life with, with this or, you know, where to go or... Where to go meaning? Um, <laughs> in terms of the world or mm. relating to people or, 
or, or work or not or <laughs> any of that sort of stuff um, or what to base um, the rest of life on. Well, keep it simple, you know. Yeah. Um, just keep it simple. That you know that your that your attention is living in a kind of freshness, right? And then can be easily guided and attracted in a very organic way, right? You don't have to have any formula laid out that you think matches your your yearning, right? It's that that you just come from the quiet of your being, the simplicity of your being. And then you'll just see how it plays out. It'll be a, an unfolding mystery. <laughs> <laughs> As life is, right? <laughs> when you surrender, it's, it's, you just don't know what's next. Basically, when you're sitting in that spot, when you're sitting in that brightness of being... You're, you're sitting in a lot of trust that you'll just handle it as it comes, right? You'll, you'll deal with it as it comes. And you'll have your, hopefully, your, your full complement of clarity to deal with it. Yes. So that's where the confidence comes. It's very open like that. There's no goal or... Endpoint or measurement? Or? Correct. No, not in this regard. Not in the regard of spiritual seeking. There's, when you see clearly that seeking falls away and the goal falls away. There are other kinds of goals. You might be saving up to go on a trip or you might be trying to get a particular kind of job. Or There are many other kinds of goals in life. And I would say... Use your energy to, uh, if you're going to be goal chasing, chase something that actually has a chance of happening. <laughs> right? <laughs> Whereas this, <laughs> you know, some sort of big attainment uh, spiritually is just a fool's errand. So, yeah. It's a place for goals, but not in the spiritual domain. Am I living in princess world? Maybe. You know, it's... Well, maybe. <laughs> maybe you are living in princess world and maybe, you know, then there's a letting go of, of the princess world. You know, as we also know, this past week was the anniversary of the, the 20 year anniversary of Princess Di's death. Mm -hmm. And think about her last moments. Right here, she was a prince. She was a princess, <laughs> and um, and you know the most famous woman in the world, and 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 living quite uh, an exalted life. Although I think she wasn't very happy in it, but nevertheless, you go from that you're speeding along in a Mercedes to being dead, right? Not immediately either. She lived a little while longer uh, in that triage process. Um, I mean, yes, maybe you, maybe you have had a feeling of being a princess and maybe right now you're not feeling like that, you know? It happens in this world. It's the, the facility that most, I most am relying on at this point is the facility of letting go. Mm. That's the one I'm really bumping up and noticing and saying, okay, more, I guess it'll be more of that, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, that, and that facility also comes with this really kind of sweet cousin that is so grateful for what's left. Mm -hmm. That's where my attention keeps turning, you know? It's sort of like, okay, well, that's gone, but okay, we still got this. <laughs> Um, the freedom that comes with letting go is actually that freedom that we're seeking. Yes, actually. yes, yes, indeed. And yes. it's a paradox, really, because we don't want that. We don't want, <laughs> we don't want to have to let go, you know. Right, to get um, that, we, right. We want to be safe and secure, and we want to know what's happening tomorrow. Yes. And, you know, we want to have a nice little life, you know. Sure. We don't want all this stuff. But actually, then there's the seeking for freedom because of the frustration of not being free. And then what happens is, through circumstance, 
through circumstance, you have to let go. <laughs> and then suddenly you feel that sense of freedom. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a possibility also of, of living with whatever does come in a very light way. That you enjoy it while it's here, you kiss the joy as it flies, as Blake says. Um, you know that you in, you play with it, but you know that it's fleeting. You know. Yes. Yeah, I. I there's I, a there's a Tibet, no a Thai teacher who who had this image. He held up a cup and he said, "What's the best way to relate to this cup?" And then he said, the best way to relate to this cup is as though it's already broken. But then you can drink at it in the meantime. You know, so, but to really understand that it, it, it all goes, you know, we're just, everything we're using is just borrowed temporarily. You know, you get a house, you sign a bunch of papers, right? Um, tr different digital things transferred between banks. And suddenly you're in a space that you're caretaking, uh, right? But, uh, you know, it's like that. It's, it's, the Sufis say, if you can lose it in a shrip shipwreck, it ain't yours. <laughs> you can pretty much lose everything in a shipwreck. Yeah. Including your own body, right? So, it's it, it's it is free to understand this. It is very freeing, very freeing. And then you 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 just play with whatever is. You'd get to dance a little while with some things and people and ideas and you know. <laughs> You get a few dances. <laughs> yeah, yes. I mean, I, I agree totally with what, with what you say, that then you think, well, at l I have a roof over my head still, and we have such a nice shower head where we are. And, yeah. you know, um, it's much better than, you know, any of the shower heads that I experienced in Melbourne. We have such a good shower head. Yeah. You know, I mean, well, you know, regardless of what happens, right. you know, we can en right. we can yeah. still enjoy that shower head Absolutely. today, tomorrow. Absolutely, and the next tomorrow. place, the next place will have something. <laughs> Maybe it won't be the shower head; it'll be something else. Yes, exactly. Right, and you know, I once was talking with someone uh, years ago, twenty years ago, in a Dharma dialogue like this, and they were having to downsize like severely, you know, from a kind of grand scene to like really, really tiny space, you know? And I pointed out to them, you know, you can only be in one room at a time anyway. <laughs> I think, I mean, there's, there's a, there is a question. I've been wondering how to ask it. Because on one hand, I've been letting go of a career and feeling fabulously liberated by that into the emptiness of that, mm. mainly letting go of it. Mm. But I've picked up in its place um, these investments and, like, I'm plugged into these investments, like, m madly, yeah. right? Which is less, uh, like, in the past I've been more pulled to more depressive kind of states, right? This is more excited state, mm, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, which is not that common for me, but I'm very drawn into it, mm -hmm. and it's partly enjoyable and partly exhausting, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because of the investments, has let me kind of go. Okay, I can let something else go, mm -hmm, right? Yeah. So I've been, so I'm dancing on that line, and. It's really, I guess, a bit of an orgy of hope. I think I've been in a bit of an orgy of hope for Yeah, that's a great phrase. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. We get that. <laughs> it's, not, it's not common for me. It's uh -huh. not my usual hangout place, uh -huh. but I can feel it's got me. And, yeah, I, I'm not sure what to say about that. Yeah. yeah. Well... Like when we look at what we long for, right? If we really look at what you long for and you keep going, keep peeling under the layer, right? 
So you could say, well, I you initially could say, well, I long for those investments coming to great fruition. Okay, so then what's that going to give you? What the really, what's the longing behind that one? Oh, well, then I'll be able to buy this or that, or I'll be able to go on some cruise or whatever, whatever. And then what's, what's that going to give you? And you keep going, peeling down the layers. You will come, perhaps, to just simply peace in your being. I, and I absolutely, I'm not that interested in money particularly, uh, actually, yeah. and things. I'm really not. But it's that, it's being, <laughs> it's being able to be in peace. It's like a, it's being able to be in peace but be financially secure. Do you know? Yes. No, yeah. I, and I understand that, Yeah. of course. But, but really, it is the peace. It's the peace. The, the financially secure is actually really about the peace mm. as well. All of those longings, usually that's what's underneath everything. Mm. And so to really choose that, it doesn't mean that you'll stop doing the other, mm. but really really experience that peace and then it will perhaps guide you in terms of how much of the other you're going to do and how much of it you're going to sweat about it and how much of it you're going to be overly excited mm -hmm. and exhausted by it mm -hmm. that's where the the rectification comes mm -hmm. is that there's a certain lightness through it when you are already experiencing a lot of peace, you know, one becomes very, even though you can do everything impeccably all the way through the process, you become very unattached to the outcome. Not entirely. Of course, you would prefer that it all go well, naturally. But... It may not, and that's the risk that you're running. And there can be some sort of acceptance, okayness, right? That's the one to keep the keep keep aligned with. Right. I guess the I guess, you know, as I'm sitting and sort of dropping into it, I guess it's ultimately the sort of fear of death there. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Money goes, I die. Do you know? Yeah. So it's that kind of line, like how would I be? I know we've spoken, I've heard you speak about the environment and, you know, I know Houston and it's like I often think, well, how would it be like right, right now if this was all taken or if this wasn't like that and, you know, how would it be? And I don't know that I can trust my sense of peace to meet that, actually. Yeah, I, 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 I'm the same. I, I'm not challenged yet at that level, um, you know. Um, but I do trust that to the degree that I can be at peace with things as they are now, that will be helpful as, as I go, you know. Um, and I, I leave open the space for really not knowing how I'll respond if, you know, if suddenly there was worldwide famine due to drought, due to heat, and, uh, and that everybody is then scrambling for the last of the resources. I don't know how I'll be in that phase. <laughs> um, but I know that along the way, all the other little stresses don't have to be severely suffered, you know. Might as well enjoy the good time, the good days. <laughs> you know, have a have a really lovely lovely relationship with your sweet life today. You know. Here in springtime. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. Good. Beautiful. It's very. It's very pertinent what you've said. I get it. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm really excited that I found. I've been listening to your podcast. I had no idea I was a neighbour. <laughs> oh, you're here in Lennon? Are you? Oh, in, I'm in the Byron Shire. In Byron. But, yeah. oh. 
Um, I've, um, yeah, so when I first started listening with your um, podcast and things, I was like such relief that there was other people thinking that way it wasn't, and I didn't feel alone and you had these dialogues and I was like, wow, to sit in a room with others would, it would be just bliss. Um, I've started and I'm, my children have grown up so I have the luxury of I live alone with my dogs and and. Um, I just feel very blessed that I'm able to, I'm going to lie down for an hour, I'm just going to listen to the wind or the birds or whatever. But sometimes I have this thing, you're being lazy <laughs> when I'm not doing stuff. And I know I grew up in that, you know, if you're sitting down doing nothing, you have all the boots to polish or so that yes. was that mentality. And yeah. you're just talking about just tell a child that they're wonderful as they are. So yeah. that, oh, I didn't grow up with that. But, yes, and so I just every so often I get this, I should be doing something yeah. rather than just experiencing this miracle because I don't know how long I have. Yes. And it is a miracle. And I have listened to your talks on the on the environment as well and I especially loved the one with um, Peter Russell, I believe. Oh, yeah. yes. Fantastic. And I don't live in fear of that. I just go, yes, I'm just shaking my head going, why aren't people understanding this, their heads are in the sand. So, yes. Yeah, but just that laziness, I suppose, I would like to address. And well, I guess that's a, a, a um, it's just a conditioning I've had. I guess. It is a conditioning for sure, and it is certainly a very powerful conditioning in our cultures, our, you know, go, 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 get, 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 more, more, more cultures, right? Um, so what I'll say to you is that First of all, the frame of laziness doesn't need to be applied. It, it may not be actually laziness. It's just quietness and contentment, right? Yes. And that is the most radical, revolutionary, beautiful act you can offer this world because this world is dying from all of the production on it and all of the doing and all of the go, go, get, get, more, more, do, 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 right? It's It's... That's what has desecrated it to the degree it is. And you're stepping out of that. And it takes a kind of, again, some sort of unique luck, grace, I don't know what to call it, that challenges the, the march, the lockstep toward, really probably toward extinction, um, that is stepping out of that. It's basically saying, no, no. I guess too, because if I talk with others, they sort of look at me like I'm a little bit mad and, and, and that's okay. So that was that relief that there's other people thinking on that way yes. and that letting go you were initially talking of. When I have that, when I experience either acceptance or letting go, it's such relief. Oh. It's just like, oh, because I didn't realise how much my every cell of my being was just... God, yes. Pushing through stuff. Yes. It was so unnecessary. So I know, yeah. isn't that the truth? It's yeah. so it's such a kind of recognition of oh, I could just step out of this storm. I'm very right. grateful. Your podcasts have been fantastic for me to just oh, yeah. There's others thinking the same. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. So they're quite you. a labor of love. You know, there there's a lot they're a lot of work, but I keep doing them. <laughs> Right. And thank God Marianne's in my life because, you know, with recording all of these sessions, it makes it so helpful. Um, I was actually on the phone just coming here. My daughter's been living overseas for over 11 years. And we catch up and she's on her own journey. And, and, and the last 18 months, I suppose, when I've really felt like this letting go has really, I've embodied it. She says, Mum, you just, I, I hear, I just hear, I, I'm not wasn't sweetness, that was the word you were using, but she just said, I just hear this lightness in you now. Mm. And what is it? I said, it's, I'm not doing anything. Good. If I want to lie in bed and read a book and the sky is blue, because <sighs> before I used to be, oh, you know, the window's moved down. So, yeah. And so oh. she's hearing that from another continent um, oh. just in my voice. So, Wow. Um, yeah. And she would know. Yes. Well, yes. She would. She grew up under my roof, unfortunately. I wasn't <laughs> doing all those wonderful things that you're probably doing with your boy. It was like, well, you should, should, should yourself. I, I carried that on and I'm a grandmother now, so I don't have to do that with him. So, oh, good. Yeah. yeah, he'll get the benefit. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, um, well, let me just come back to this, um, the point of how beautiful to come to a point where you can just be, right? 
It's what we're talking about. It's, it's my only message ever, you know, to just be, you know, like to, I mean, it's also useful to ask yourself, if this was my last day, what would I be doing, right? Or my last few months, right? I wouldn't be pushing that rock like Sisyphus up some imaginary mountain, you know? And if you're in a position to really take time to enjoy your life in a slowed down way or going whatever pace you feel like going, then, wow, really great, really lucky. I feel one of the very blessed people on the planet, actually, was yeah. having that. I, yeah, I had a corporate job for years and doing the crazy thing. So you and know. I work between four and 12 hours a week, so there's a lot of nothing time. Yeah. Yes. So, so thank you, Catherine. This has been In the Deep. You can find the entire list of In the Deep podcasts at katherineingram.com, where you can also book a private session by phone or Skype and see my schedule of upcoming events, such as our spectacular retreat in Italy next October of 2018. If you're a regular listener, please consider making either a one-time or a recurring tax-deductible donation in any amount that is comfortable for you. Till next time.